Now at 5 a.m., WKYT This Morning is on the air. It is a first alert severe weather day. We're tracking a story out of Owen County as well, where a man is missing after rising flood waters there. We'll also continue our first alert weather coverage in Jasmine County and see what those storms left behind and how it's impacting drivers. And many of the presidential candidates are making a final push for voters in Indiana, but others will be making campaign stops in Kentucky. We're live on the campaign trail ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good Monday morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. I'm Bill Bryant. We're live from Lexington with all the latest on WKYT this morning. May 2nd, and May arrived with uh, some noise, you know. Yes, it did. A lot of people had a rough day yesterday, really? especially uh, Micah. Lots of uh, cleaning up. Yeah, Micah, it's a WKYT first alert severe weather day, and I'm sure you don't want to tangle with the weather again, right? No, I do not. Lightning struck right next to beside my house. It kind of fried a few outlets upstairs and some of my electronics, too. It just wasn't fun. But you know what? Could have been way worse. I know a lot of us out there dealt with some wind damage and also some hail falling across the region. So uh, you guys had it way worse than I did, but nonetheless, still affected by it. Here's flash flood watch in effect. Nothing going on right now, but look down toward the southeast. That's where we're holding on to that flash flood watch through tomorrow. So really, all our eyes are focused in on the southeastern zones. Not so much central, not so much west or north. It's only a 40% chance of rain today, and that 40% lies. For the south and the east. So, we're going to be talking about that, watching the southeast very closely with temperatures right around 72 degrees. Some of us will have a really nice day, others of us dealing with those thunderstorms. And I'm going to break that forecast down for you coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. We thank you, Micah. And some folks across central and eastern Kentucky are having to clean up this morning after all of that rain and the winds that blew through. And we're bracing for more of what could be in store for today. Yeah, and Owen County crews are looking for a man after flooding there. WKYT's Mike. Mike Byer is at our live desk this morning, continuing our first alert weather coverage. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Michelle. A man is still missing this morning in Owen County after he was swept away in a flash flood on Highway 368 near Terracita Road in Owenton. Crews say a creek beside the road washed out around 5:30 yesterday evening, and flood water swept that man who was inside his truck at the time away. Now the man's identity has not been released. State police are helping with the search. Meanwhile, over in Carter County, high winds from yesterday's severe weather destroyed a mobile home on Satellite Road in Grayson. This happened around 5 p.m. Carter County Emergency Management says the strong winds ripped through or ripped the roof of the home off and left the rest of it in shambles. A man was inside at the time but was not injured. We're told he's lost almost everything he owned. Now, as Mike had just mentioned, we could see some more rounds of showers and storms today, which means these areas could be further affected. Of course, we'll keep you updated on the WKYT News app as well as on air and online. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. And some people in parts of central Kentucky are cleaning up this morning as well after storms left behind a mess for them. In Jessamine County, high winds knocked over trees, debris covered the roads, hail hit some buildings there. Police and state workers stayed busy throughout the night cleaning up those messes in the middle of roadways. One Jessamine County Sheriff's deputy made multiple stops last night, making sure all drivers got around the debris safely until it was cleared. So far, it's been pretty quick. The state's been, you know, very cooperative in coming out and getting this, getting this taken care of. Uh, we've got a couple now that are pretty large that they're trying to get bigger, larger equipment in now to take care of them. The deputy tells us that most of the mess was on some of the state roads that are not highly traveled. There has been a couple of reports of some roof damage in the county as well. With the rain continuing today, especially in parts of eastern Kentucky, flooding is still a concern. Several areas have seen at least three or more inches of rain accumulate. Many creeks and streams swelled yesterday, flooding roads. A man in Breathitt County says he can't even leave his home because water is surrounding it. The creek raised up the road level about six to eight feet, and it just raised right on up. Now, so far, emergency crews say there are no reported injuries due to all of this flooding. You can track the latest forecast, radar, and weather headlines on WKYT.com and on the WKYT News app. You can download that for free in our app or Google Play stores. The 2016 presidential contenders make a final campaign push in Indiana, which holds its critical primary tomorrow. It's a big one. Certainly 92 delegates are at stake for the Democrats, while 57 delegates are on the line for the Republicans tomorrow. Hannah Daniels has the latest. 
from the campaign. Donald Trump continues to paint himself as the eventual GOP nominee, mocking his rival's chances at a campaign event in Indiana Sunday night. You look at these guys that I'm running against. Now they're hanging by their fingernails. They're just like barely hanging on. A Trump win here would put him even closer to clinching the Republican nomination ahead of the summer convention. Trailing Trump by 15 points in the state, rival Ted Cruz is counting on Indiana voters to stop that from happening. I believe in the men and women gathered here that we will not give in to evil. Eyeing the general election, Hillary Clinton courted African Americans at an NAACP dinner in Detroit yesterday. It's about unity versus division. Compassion versus selfishness and love versus hate. Clinton is 90% on the way to clinching her party's nomination, but faces a bitter fight in Indiana against rival Bernie Sanders. Looks to me like we're going to win here on Tuesday. Polls indicate the Vermont senator is within striking distance of winning the Democratic primary in Indiana tomorrow. And as Daniels, CBS News. Trump, Cruz, and Sanders will all be holding events in Indiana today. John Kasich agreed not to campaign in the state last week as part of a Hail Mary alliance with Ted Cruz. So and not all of the candidates are focusing on Indiana and California. At this point, both Democratic presidential candidates are coming to the bluegrass this week, and that's ahead of the May 17th primary here in Kentucky. WKYT's Mark Barber is live now with who we can expect in the Commonwealth. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. Well, we can expect to see Hillary Clinton in the Commonwealth later today. She will be targeting a region that has been economically depressed by the decline of the coal industry. She will be campaigning in Ashland, Kentucky, and Williamson, West Virginia later today. She plans to talk to voters about her plans to uh, raise more money for their income for people who have been passed by. The former first lady has been heavily in, or rather heavily criticized for making previous statements where she said her policies would put coal companies out of business. Clinton has since said that she made a mistake by saying that and she is standing by coal communities. Her husband and former president Bill Clinton is also coming to Kentucky to campaign for her this week. Tomorrow he will be going to events in Lexington, Moorhead and Louisville. Kentucky voters will choose between Hillary Clinton and Senator Bernie Sanders during the May 17th Democratic primary. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, it's going to be interesting, and uh, you know you can, uh, of course, uh, know the WKYT will be uh, on top of the coverage uh, throughout the campaign, right through November. Yes, and all day today as well, right? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Time this morning is 5.08. It's good to have you with us this morning. Other news now. Firefighters over in Estill County are still uh, trying to figure out what caused a fire that destroyed a home there. Yeah, firefighters say it took them nearly 20 minutes yesterday morning to get to the fire on Lynch Road. They say the home is located in a very remote spot. By the time we got here, the structure was pretty much was gone. So our major concern at that time was trying to cool it down as fast as we could to, uh, to, to try to save any, any property that we could, but to, to try to keep it from going up into the woods. The homeowner said she was at church with her family when the fire started. The Johnson County Sheriff's Office is investigating a suspicious fire in the Wittensville community. Deputies say a barn caught fire early yesterday morning and the flame spread to a nearby house. The fire also damaged a house across the street. There were people inside the home when the fire started, but everyone got out safely. Deputies believe the cause of the fire is arson. New this morning in New York, a fire destroyed an historic church. More than 150 firefighters have contained that fire that broke out last night at that church in Manhattan. The flames destroyed the roof. Firefighters say there was only one minor injury. Church members gathered there to celebrate Easter. The church, formerly known as Trinity Chapel, was built in the 1850s and was declared a landmark in 1968. Police in Jamaica say two U.S. missionaries have been found dead in a rural part of the island. Officials released a statement identifying the two men as 48-year-old Randy Hensel and 53-year-old Harold Nichols. Officials say their bodies were found in bushes. Investigators have made no arrests and have not released a possible motive. 
Muhammad Ali's childhood home is now open as a museum in Louisville. It's the house where the boxing champ grew up with his parents and siblings. Now, the home set abandoned until two business partners bought it and restored it. One of them said the museum honors Ali's accomplishments. Ali lived in that home from the late 1940s until the early 1960s. A lot of people are going to show up to that. I right. Believe. It was quite an effort to restore it. There was a possibility it was going to be lost, and uh, so the community got together, and now it's a museum. Good That's deal. That's pretty cool. 510 on WKYT this morning. We're just getting started on your Monday, and it's so good to have you with us as we get this new week, Derby Week in Kentucky, off and rolling. Yeah, a lot of people are going to be doing this this weekend. You better be on time if you order an Uber. The car service is testing a new timed window for passengers to get to their car. How long you have to catch a lift? Still ahead on WKYT this morning. We're calm right now, but that is the calm ahead of the next storms. It's going to be rolling on through, but only a select region will see the storms for today. I'll show you who that is and who's going to be dry coming up next. Nothing going on early this morning. It has calmed down tremendously, and that's some good news for us because we just don't need any more water falling out of the sky. In some locations, we still have a flood warning as you work your way back toward the eastern portions of Breathe County. Uh, go off into McGoffin County and then work your way into northern Floyd County and southern Johnson County. That area right there uh, can experience still some water issues there on the roads, but good news, yeah, the, the, the rain has calmed down. The bad news here is it's not calmed down all the way. I mean, we still are going to be seeing some thunderstorms later on this afternoon, but I told you before the break, I told you there is a select area that we could see those thunderstorms roll back through because the front has not pushed its way all the way through. So if you go down toward the south and the east, I would say anywhere from Martin County to McGoffin, McGoffin to Breathitt, Breathitt go back toward London Corbin area and Laurel County and all the way back down toward, say, Wayne and also McCreary, and then go down south and southeast into the mountains. That's where you see the best chance at a few more storms. Remember, marginal risk, low end risk. So that's what we're going to be seeing. It's nothing like yesterday. It's not widespread. It's not one severe thunderstorm after another. You're going to get isolated cells, but we're not really concerned so much about the severe weather today in this area. It's more about this is a good outline of where you could see more flooding too. Flooding is going to be our main concern today. And that's why we still have that first alert severe weather day intact. High winds very low. Hail concerns, still very low. But flooding, yeah, we're up there to moderate. And that's what we have to be watching out for. But like I was talking about, it's mainly southeast. There's only a 40% chance of rain today. And so that goes for you guys down toward the mountainous regions. For bluegrass region, you're talking about a 20% chance of rain. I would say Madison County is more like 30%. Then you go into Frankfort, 0%. So it kind of depends on where you are. Farther north and west you are, better likelihood of staying dry today. We hit in toward the afternoon, I'd say those storms for you guys in the southeast spark up anywhere from 1 p.m. to about 6 p.m. as they roll on through. By 8 and 9 p.m., you still have a small chance. It's still there, but it's fading away, and it looks like a night uh, that we'll be able to rest easy as those storms push on out right around 8 to about 11 p.m. There's your seven day forecast, and the breakdown of it is not a bad forecast in store. The next few days, still with the rain chances in there, but they are nothing like what you, you saw yesterday. These are very minimal chances at even thunderstorms. Most of this is just some showers rolling on through. You could have a rumble of thunder mixed in, but for the most part, just a few chilly showers as this system dives in from the north. And as that system dives in from the north, guys, it's going to bring in some cold air. And check that out. We're at 59 degrees on Thursday. That's much cooler than where we have been. And that is also 10 degrees below average, too. 10 to 12, depending on where you are. But once we hit Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you head off toward the Derby. Derby parties look good to go. And that's exactly what a lot of us need as we head towards your weekend. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, we will. Yeah, those days look great. Don't look they? for those improvements. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, so Kentucky Derby Week starting off on a tough note uh, yeah. so far. Uh, coming up on 517 on WKYT on your Monday morning. When we come back, we'll have a look at your money. Hey, good morning to you and welcome back into WKYT this morning on your Monday. Good to have you along with us at 520. There's good news for those of you who prefer to shop at Whole Foods, but also want some lower prices. And your iPhone could get a much needed tweak. Joe Wagner has the latest on your money. Whole Foods is getting ready to launch its new lower cost 365 grocery chain geared toward millennials and hipsters. 
Whole Foods will team up with local vendors to offer more than just food and drinks. There were rumors that some 365 stores would even include tattoo parlors, but Whole Foods says that is not in the works. The first location is slated to open in Los Angeles at the end of May. It was another down day on Wall Street. The Dow lost 57 points on Friday. The Nasdaq lost 29 points. Better be on time if you order an Uber. The car service is testing a two-minute window for passengers to get their car. After that, the meter starts ticking. Right now, there is a five-minute grace period. Uber is testing the two-minute window in Dallas, New Jersey, New York, and Phoenix. And Apple could be tweaking its autocorrect feature on iPhones. According to Apple Insider, the tech company filed a patent for a system that will let your friends know when autocorrect has been at work. It could help avoid potential confusion and embarrassment. And that is your CBS Money Watch report. For more, follow me on Twitter at Jill Wagner CBS. In New York, I'm Jill Wagner. Okay, then it's 521 now on WKYT this morning on your Monday Rise and Shine, and let's make it a good day. What do you say? More news coming right up. Yeah, and sports is next. It is calm this morning, and that is some good news. However, it's the calm before the storm, and some locations, not all. It's a 40% chance of rain today. Farther southeast you go, that is the better likelihood. In fact, we're seeing a, more, a few more storms in the forecast. The winds are coming in from the south and southwest. But you look back toward the west of us, and they're coming in from the northwest. There is a front as it travels across the river, and all that is heading southeast. So we will start to see those temperatures take a dive. But it's just going to take some time. Now, the front doesn't push all the way through today, and that's why there's far southeastern zones. You'll have the better likelihood of actually seeing some storms today. By the afternoon, we're in the mid 70s and also holding on to those showers and thunderstorms. It's mainly afternoon, evening, it starts to fade away, so we'll be able to sleep soundly as we travel off into the nighttime hours. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Kentucky Derby Week has arrived, and you can get used to hearing the name Nyquist. The Kentucky bred three year old Colt is the favorite heading into Derby 142. The Florida Derby winner spent a few weeks at Keeneland before making the trip to Churchill Downs on Saturday, and on Sunday morning, he got his first look at Churchill's track. But following a year where we've had a Triple Crown winner, could an undefeated Nyquist actually be underappreciated? I mean, I think he's a very good horse, and. Uh... You know, I was very impressed by his Florida Derby. Um, I think Mo Heyman's a very good horse, and you know he was able to able to beat him on his home track. So uh, yeah, I, I, I think he's he's getting slighted, but I don't have a good explanation for why. He looks like he's going to be a likely favorite. I can see why people are going to want to try to beat him, and uh, that's what makes uh, this sport great and all other sports great. So I have I respect people who want to knock him for different things, but uh, it's hard to knock the seven for seven. On Saturday, Josh Forrest became the fourth Kentucky linebacker drafted in the past five years when the Rams selected him in the sixth round, 190th overall. Forrest told reporters that he had goosebumps once he learned that he would be selected by the Rams. The Paducah Tillman product was the first defensive player selected by the Rams after they used their first four picks on offensive players. General Manager Les Snead described Forrest as a raw talent with tenacity. Now, Forrest was the only UK player drafted, but several others will have a chance. They've agreed to undrafted rookie free agent contracts. We told you about a few of them on Saturday. The newest guys on Sunday are the three highlighted in yellow. Safety AJ Stamps is headed to Browns camp, and a pair of linebackers will get a chance as well. Khalid Henderson with the Bears, Ryan Flanagan with the Falcons. In all, that's eight rookie free agents from UK. And then at the bottom there, a pair of EKU players agreeing to free agent contracts. Running back Deshaun Mobley with the Bengals and tight end Ben Maiden with the Raiders. EKU's Noah Spence was a second round draft pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a look at your morning sports. Have a great Monday, everyone.